Welcome to the Story World Channel. Enjoy your viewing experience. As the daylight waned, giving way to the encroaching embrace of an autumnal chill, Emma found herself caught in the throes of a restless evening. Chad, her ever-watchful husband, inquired curiously, Why the rush, Emma? He observed her hurried eating and the constant glances she stole at her wristwatch. With a touch of nostalgia, Emma recounted her friend Julia's plea for assistance, a friend with whom she had shared a roof in their days at the orphanage. A difficult surgery had left Julia in need, and Emma, unable to resist the call of friendship, had committed herself to aiding with household chores. Her imploring gaze sought understanding from Chad. Chad's confusion was palpable. Are you her servant, Emma? He questioned, his tone laced with bewilderment. I fail to comprehend your actions. Emma's response was swift, her determination evident. Darling, fear not. My absence will be brief. I shall return shortly. She assured him before darting out of their abode mere moments later. Chad's lineage bore the weight of a distinguished military background. His parents staunchly opposed to his union with Emma, an orphan from their shared days at the orphanage. Their aspirations for Chad leaned toward diplomacy, envisioning him wed to Sarah, the scion of a renowned local tycoon. Before encountering Emma, Chad had not been averse to the idea of marrying Sarah for pragmatic reasons, succumbing to his father's advice. However, Chad's ambitions were rooted in the realm of commerce rather than diplomacy, a fact that Mr. Ben, Sarah's father, was keen to capitalize on. Chad's overseas education was illustrious, his intellect sharp, and his memory unparalleled. Under Mr. Ben's tutelage, Chad's business acumen was honed, with the older man sharing his insights, experiences, and even investments in a joint venture. Consequently, an array of shopping centers emerged, one after the other, ushering in profits that swelled the coffers of the enterprising businessmen. In a contented tone, Mr. Ben mused, Before long, my son-in-law, we shall be bound not only by financial ties, but also by blood. Chad was the epitome of the perfect husband in Mr. Ben's eyes, a match deemed suitable for his indulged daughter, Sarah. Yet love did not blossom between the young couple, despite outward appearances. Such notions of love are reserved for the naive, Mr. Ben remarked dismissively. What matters is compatibility, and you two are indeed a fitting pair, youthful, attractive, and driven. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows in its wake, the unfolding tale resonated with a blend of perplexity and burstiness, embodying the intricate interplay of emotions and aspirations that defined Emma and Chad's journey. Amidst the labyrinth of life's challenges, the adage, what can't be cured must be endured, often rings true. However, destiny had an entirely different script in store for the course of events that had been predicted by Mr. Ben. A serendipitous encounter at the cinema shattered all preconceived notions, turning the very fabric of existence upside down. This remarkable upheaval was catalyzed by Chad's fateful interaction with Emma a young woman of provincial origins who toiled diligently at a local factory. In the intricate web of life, she occupied a modest room within a communal dwelling. It was within the enchanting ambience of the cinema that the spark of love was kindled in Chad's heart. The embers of affection ignited suddenly, even in the midst of their initial rendezvous. What was it that rendered Emma so captivating to Chad? Perhaps it was her genuine kindness, unwavering sincerity, gentle meekness, unassuming modesty, and a wellspring of tenderness. These virtues stood in stark contrast to the qualities conspicuously absent in Sarah. Despite the brief duration of their acquaintance, a mere week, Chad found himself swept away by the tempest of love, his emotions mirroring the unbridled enthusiasm of youth. In his heart, he was unequivocally certain life without Emma was an insufferable prospect. The sentiment was reciprocated, as Emma herself harbored no doubts about the man she had encountered. He was the embodiment of the heroes she had so often read about in the pages of romantic novels. 
The realms of fiction had seamlessly manifested in her reality. As their encounters multiplied, the bond between them deepened, culminating in Chad's audacious proposal, a declaration of his love and unwavering commitment to Emma. However, the revelation of their intention to marry was met with an outpouring of disbelief and dismay from Chad's parents. Their emotional response was nothing short of a tempest, their voices echoing with incredulity. Are you out of your mind? They implored, their desperation palpable. The notion of exchanging Sarah, a scion of privilege, for an orphan without familial heritage appeared preposterous. Anxiety loomed large, and the looming shadow of Mr. Ben's expectations cast a further pall over their union. How will we face Mr. Ben? The parents agonized. He has invested so much in your future, both in terms of business and a semblance of normalcy. Yet, Chad's resolve remained unswayed. His love for Emma stood unwavering, an impenetrable fortress shielding him from his parents' barrage of concerns. The devotion he felt was potent, rendering their objections insignificant in comparison. Mr. Ben, with a calculated reassurance, attempted to mollify the concerns of Chad's parents. Don't be hasty, he advised, seeking to pacify their fears. Marriage is but a chapter. There will be ample opportunities to correct any perceived missteps. Chad's aspirations remain aligned with a future intertwined with Sarah. Amidst an intimate gathering, marked by the conspicuous absence of guests, Emma and Chad exchanged vows. Their union was witnessed by the barest of attendants, with even Chad's parents maintaining a perfunctory presence that lasted no longer than a mere 10 minutes. Yet, happiness emanated from the young couple's every pore as they embarked on a journey of shared joy and serenity. Chad's industriousness bore fruit, affording them a spacious apartment within a burgeoning residential complex. Their days flowed harmoniously, marked by shared laughter, companionship, and the establishment of a familial cocoon. United in both heart and soul, Chad and Emma seemed to merge seamlessly. Their shared vision for the future was adorned with dreams of parenthood, a testament to their unwavering commitment to nurturing the love they had found within each other's embrace. The tranquil repose of a quiet afternoon was abruptly shattered by the shrill ring of a telephone, jolting Emma from her peaceful reverie. Hello, she answered cautiously, a note of uncertainty in her voice. Emma, it's me, Scott, your long-lost brother. A familiar voice crackled through the receiver. I've been released from prison for three days now. His return was unexpected, catching Emma off guard. She could feel the heat of his presence, his tumultuous history weighing heavily in the air. Emma was well aware of the undercurrent of disdain that ran through Chad's family towards her, an awareness that made her cautious. She carefully navigated the conversation, withholding the full extent of her family's past. She revealed just enough, mentioning her time in an orphanage, omitting the darker chapters of her mother's incarceration for a grave crime and her subsequent passing. Nor did Emma disclose that her brother Scott had followed a similar path, locked away for robbery. She feared that such revelations would irrevocably tarnish her relationship with Chad's family, potentially undoing the happiness she had found in her marriage. As Scott's voice persisted on the other end, a sense of urgency became palpable. Emma, are you still there? Are you happy now? I've heard that you've married a millionaire. You must have plenty of money to spare. Can't you help out your own brother? His request hung in the air, leaden with desperation. Emma's heart wavered, torn between familial duty and the intricate tapestry of her new life. I need a bit of assistance, Emma. Just a temporary place to stay. I'll return the money as soon as I can. Emma's hesitation was evident, but she ultimately acquiesced, agreeing to consider his plea. After all, since her marriage to Chad, her financial circumstances had changed significantly. She had left her job at the factory, adhering to her husband's wishes, and now received a regular allowance on a personal card. 
This financial arrangement had allowed her to support Scott discreetly, providing for his needs from afar, and even securing a small apartment for him. Chad, however, began to notice a pattern, a lack of updates to Emma's wardrobe and frequent absences from home. Observing her closely, he broached the subject gently one day, Emma, is everything all right? I've noticed you haven't been shopping for new clothes. Is there something bothering you? Emma, ever resourceful, replied, why spend extravagantly? I have plenty of perfectly fine clothes in my closet. Chad's loving smile met her words. You're beautiful no matter what you wear, he assured her. However, there was an underlying concern in Chad's mind, a nagging worry about Emma's unexplained departures from their home. Over the past month, he had witnessed her frequent outings, each one shrouded in secrecy. Today, too, she had a reason to leave, the call from her friend Julia, seeking her aid once again. Chad admired Emma's compassion and her unwavering commitment to helping others. Yet he was taken aback by the lengths she was willing to go, a revelation that hinted at a side of her he hadn't fully comprehended before. As he reflected on Emma's actions, he found himself considering the complexity of the woman he loved, a woman who carried her past with her, treading the delicate line between her present and the shadowy corridors of her history. Once again, Emma found herself navigating a labyrinth of challenges as she went to extraordinary lengths to assist her brother. A heavy heart accompanied her as she carefully selected groceries, well aware that placing money directly into his hands would likely fuel a destructive spiral into alcoholism. Her determination stemmed from a place of love, yet it was coupled with a growing awareness of the disapproval she sensed from her husband, Chad. Her unexplained absences cast a shadow over her, a looming risk that she might inadvertently distance herself from Chad, the love of her life. The negative thoughts that plagued her proved insistent, relentless in their return. Determined to confront the growing tension head-on, Emma made a solemn promise to herself to share the truth of her clandestine excursions with Chad the following day. Her intentions were genuine, an attempt to bridge the gap between her commitment to her family and her devotion to her husband. Unbeknownst to Emma, a shadowy scheme was unfolding in the background, one orchestrated by the very fabric of her husband's past. Sarah's family harbored deep-seated reservations about Chad's decision to align his life with Emma's. Mr. Ben, fueled by resentment and malevolence, was conspiring to sever the ties that bound the couple. His strategy was cunning, aimed at sowing seeds of doubt and mistrust. Mr. Ben sought to exploit Emma's unwavering dedication, aiming to frame her for infidelity and subsequently engineer a divorce that would shatter the foundation of Emma and Chad's union. The execution of his plan was entrusted to Paul, Mr. Ben's astute driver. Paul chanced upon Emma on the streets, her company an unfamiliar man. Swiftly, he captured incriminating photographs, a visual testament to his encounter. He reported his findings to Mr. Ben, who expressed unadulterated satisfaction. Paul, you've exceeded my expectations. Your diligence deserves a reward, he exclaimed, reveling in the success of his malevolent strategy. Guided by his newfound role as a private investigator, Paul continued to tail Emma, becoming a silent observer of her movements. He recorded her comings and goings, all the while contributing to the insidious plot that was unraveling before them. With a sense of triumph, Mr. Ben presented Chad with the evidence he had so meticulously gathered. The revelation was met with disbelief as Chad struggled to reconcile the image before him with the woman he loved. A storm of doubt raged within him, fueled by his father-in-law's cunning words. Look for yourself, Chad. See who your wife spends her time with, Mr. Ben sneered, a glint of malice in his eyes. Handing Chad a slip of paper containing an address, he challenged him to uncover the truth. Chad's world was thrown into disarray. Doubts gnawed at the edges of his consciousness, threatening to undermine the foundation of his marriage. Emma's loyalty and dedication remained unwavering in his heart. 
Yet the persistent whispers of his father-in-law's insinuations refused to be silenced. The subsequent days were marked by an unrelenting ache within Chad's chest, a metaphorical thorn that festered as he grappled with the tangled web of deceit and loyalty that entwined his life. In the depths of contemplation, Chad resolved to embark on a clandestine journey to the address that had been unveiled to him. A shroud of secrecy enveloped his decision, and he deliberately withheld his intentions from Emma. Fate, however, seemed to play its hand, for on the very day that Emma had summoned the courage to unveil the truth to Chad, he found himself absent from home, his punctuality disrupted. I might be running late today, Emma, he informed her, the weight of his own deception heavy in his voice. Work demands my attention, dear. Take your time as well. Of course, love, Emma responded, her words laced with a tenderness that masked the turmoil she concealed within. I've been meaning to address your concerns about my clothes. A trip to the store seems due. Perhaps I'll find something that will bring a touch of freshness to my wardrobe. Chad was left confounded once again, grappling with the enigmatic nature of Emma's actions. The fragments of doubt that had crept into his mind held steadfast their persistence gnawing at the corners of his consciousness. Neither the photographs nor the spoken words could be taken at face value, as deception could easily fabricate such evidence. The truth, Chad was resolute, had to be unveiled through his own eyes. Time passed, and Chad's determination swelled. Wearing a disguise of a pizza delivery man, he ventured to the specified address, his heart pulsating with a mix of apprehension and fervor. His attempt to gain entry was met with skepticism from within, the rough timbre of a male voice questioning his presence. Who is it? The voice demanded. Pizza delivery, Chad replied, his tone practiced. I didn't order any pizza, came the retort. Please, just open the door so I can note the refusal, Chad implored, his facade unwavering. The door creaked ajar, revealing a disheveled young man with the faintest hint of alcohol clinging to his breath. But Chad's focus was immediately drawn to the figure near the window, her presence a stark revelation. Emma, how could you? Chad's voice trembled with a potent mix of disbelief and betrayal. I trusted you. Emma turned, her eyes locking onto Chad's, a plea for understanding in their depths. Chad, please allow me to explain. Stay here. Chad, however, remained resolute, his gaze unwavering. He shook his head, the weight of his emotions unspoken, and retreated from the scene, descending the stairs onto the street below. An indescribable tumult churned within him, a tempest of emotions that threatened to engulf him entirely. The magnitude of the moment was staggering leaving Chad feeling as though his world had crumbled around him. The surge of emotions almost led to an accident, the tumult within mirroring the chaos of the street before him. An hour later, Emma returned home, her eyes swollen from tears, her heart heavy with remorse. She beseeched Chad to listen, to understand, to offer her the chance to unveil the truth that lay at the heart of the tangled web. Amidst tears and whispered confessions, Emma unraveled her tale. Scott was her flesh and blood, her own brother, and the circumstances that had led her to those secret meetings were far from sinister. Her desperate pleas, however, fell upon deaf ears. Chad's belief in her faltered, his foundation of trust shattered irreparably. The word infidelity echoed through his mind, casting a dark shadow over the love that once bound them. Despite the love that still coursed through his veins, Chad found himself at a crossroads, a stark decision demanding to be made. Get your suitcase, his words were cold and unfeeling, the voice unrecognizable even to himself. Leave, we're ending this, I'm announcing a divorce. Emma's world shattered, her heart aching with the weight of his pronouncement. Swiftly, she gathered a few belongings, her movements mechanical, and stepped out into the unknown. The door slammed shut behind her, the sound reverberating with finality. Seated on a park bench, her world reduced to a whirlwind of emotions, 
Emma hugged her head in her hands and wept, a poignant reflection of a love undone, a future unraveled, and the heartache that remained in their wake. Now, let us embark on a journey to transform and expand the following seed. A phone call brought her back to reality. Ethereal tendrils of connection intertwined through the vast expanse of cyberspace, and in an instant, the trill of a phone call jolted her senses, yanking her from the reverie of thoughts. The echoes of her own contemplations dispersed like morning mist, leaving her tethered to the immediacy of the moment. It's Chad. Chad, the urgency in her voice was palpable, a name reverberating like a clarion call. Yet fate's capricious hand played its cards, dealing an unexpected revelation. He's changed his mind, Emma. The words tumbled forth, each syllable etched with a weighty gravity that cast a shadow over her heart. A cry tore from her lips, a primal sound of despair that seemed to rend the very fabric of her being. But alas, life's tapestry often weaves a narrative not of our choosing. The cruel twist of fate had masked the identity of the caller, shrouding it in a cloak of deception. It was not Chad who reached out to her, but rather her confidant, her ally in times of tumult, Julia. A rueful smile danced upon her lips, for even amidst the tears, a bittersweet realization unfurled. Hey, Emma, how are you? The voice on the other end of the line painted a landscape of friendship and concern. Julia's cheerfulness cascaded through the receiver, a lifeline in the storm of emotions. Emma's tears flowed freely, her sobs an unbridled torrent. The dam of emotions, once breached, could not be quelled. Her heart spilled its anguish into the receiver, carried by invisible currents to the waiting ears of her steadfast friend. And then, a beacon of hope pierced the gloom. A voice, tinged with anticipation, spoke of imminent reunion. Hey, are you home? I'll be there in ten minutes. The words hung in the air, a promise of solace in the midst of turmoil. From the tapestry of their shared history, a thread emerged, woven through the fabric of their lives since childhood. Emma's sanctuary of vulnerability had always found a haven within the walls of her friendship with Julia. In this realm of unguarded confessions, she had bared her soul, weaving a bond stronger than the passage of time. In the crucible of this emotional exchange, truths lay bare. Yes, you messed up everything. Julia's voice, laced with empathy, bore the weight of understanding. And your little brother, that scoundrel, got involved. The tendrils of compassion reached across the divide, bridging the chasm of Emma's self-condemnation. Emma, don't beat yourself up like this. The words were a lifeline, a plea to release the shackles of guilt. Maybe everything will be okay. Julia's optimism unfurled like a banner against the winds of despair. The roadmap to redemption began to take shape, the path of reconciliation illuminated by hope's gentle glow. Chad must understand that there was no infidelity. The assertion carried with it a sense of conviction. The grand tapestry of compassion unfurled further, offering refuge in the storm. If you have nowhere to live now, move in with me. Julia's invitation hung in the air, a haven in a world fraught with uncertainty. I live alone. The apartment is small but cozy. The gesture of camaraderie was etched with sincerity, a testament to the unbreakable bonds of friendship. Julia's words flowed like a soothing river, each sentence a tributary of optimism converging into a confluence of comfort. Her inherent belief in brighter days painted the horizon with hues of possibility, an artist of the heart brushing the canvas of Emma's spirit. Amidst the tempest of emotions, a resolve emerged, unyielding as iron. Emma clung to the belief that redemption was attainable, that her beloved Chad would traverse the labyrinth of misunderstanding and find his way back to her waiting embrace. With a touch of naivety, almost childlike in its purity, Emma clung to her conviction. The tale she had woven within her heart was a testament to the enduring power of love, a fable in which happily ever after was the inevitable conclusion. Days drifted by, each carrying its weight of uncertainty, 
Yet Emma's resolve remained unshaken. The sands of time slipped through the hard glass, and as the days melted into weeks, the caress of reality began to erode the edges of her fantasy. Emma's financial foundation, once sturdy, now crumbled beneath the weight of necessity. The remnants of Chad's generosity dwindled, each expense a reminder of the transience of wealth. Julia's unwavering support became the bedrock upon which Emma rested her hopes. I need to find a job, Emma's declaration echoed with a newfound determination. The realization dawned that waiting, however fervent, would not sate the hunger pangs of reality. Yes, Julia's concurrence was steadfast, a mirror reflecting the shared truth. My friend, we can't go on like this for much longer. The camaraderie of souls echoed through the words, a pact to face adversity side by side. Julia, a nurse by vocation, navigated the labyrinthine corridors of the hospital, her footsteps a testament to her dedication. Yet the wage bestowed upon her was a mere whisper amidst the clamor of expenses, barely a lifeline in the tempest. Meanwhile, Emma embarked on a quest, a modern-day odyssey through the city's streets. Each knock on Opportunity's door was met with a chorus of rejection, a symphony of closed doors. The pangs of disappointment stung all the more when her past affiliations turned her away, the once cov. Amidst the tapestry of life, a figure emerged, his hair like silver threads woven by time itself, a man of esteemed years who commanded respect with his mere presence. With measured steps, he approached her, his eyes a wellspring of concern. Miss, are you all right? The question hung in the air like a fragile whisper, and Emma, her heart heavy with unspoken burdens, offered a wordless nod. To the first sympathetic soul she encountered, she unburdened her heart, the words flowing like a desperate plea. I truly need a job, her voice trembled with a mix of determination and vulnerability. A proposition emerged from the sea of faces, a lifeline cast upon the tempestuous waters of fate. If you'd like, come with me to our community. The gray-haired man's offer carried the weight of hope. Our concierge mentioned a need for a janitor. Would you consider it? The answer sprung forth like a beacon of resolve, unwavering in its certainty. Yes, of course. And so, Emma stepped into a new chapter of her journey, donning the mantle of a janitor. Days turned into nights as she toiled ceaselessly, her hands marked by the trials of her labor. Blisters formed, and though they whispered tales of discomfort, they were but a footnote in the symphony of her perseverance. For Emma, these blisters were not the curse of agony. Rather, they were the proof of her resilience, the tangible evidence of her steadfast determination. A loaf of bread became more than sustenance. It was a symbol of self-reliance, a testament to her strength. Yet amidst the backdrop of her newfound independence, a shadow descended, casting a pall over her days. A sudden ailment, an unwelcome intruder, swept through her like a tempest. Dizziness seized her, and with a Herculean effort, she stumbled to a bench, seeking refuge from the storm within. Seconds stretched into eternities, but the malaise eventually receded, leaving her shaken yet undeterred. With unwavering resolve, she returned to her duties, a testament to her tenacity. The evening sun often painted the sky in hues of gold, but for Emma, those moments of respite were tinged with uncertainty. The attacks were visited, each one a haunting reminder of her vulnerability. In the quiet moments between breaths, concern carved lines upon her friend's face. Julia's intuition whispered secrets only hearts could discern. Are you pregnant, perhaps? The question hung delicately in the air, the unspoken answer a dance between fear and longing. Horror seized Emma at the notion, her thoughts a maelstrom of emotions. But as fate would have it, her fears were soon confirmed, a reality that unraveled before her eyes. The weight of the truth bore down upon her, and even Julia, a beacon of optimism, could not dispel the shadows that crept into their midst. Physically, you probably can't work anymore. Julia's words were laden with a melancholic resignation, a sentiment shared by both friend and confidant. 
The realization hung heavy, like a shroud draped over the future, and even the most hopeful hearts could not escape its grasp. The weight of impending motherhood cast a pall over Emma's thoughts, the future suddenly painted in hues of uncertainty. How would they traverse this uncharted territory, where finances faltered and stability wavered? Yet, despite the storm clouds that gathered, Julia's determination remained unswayed. She masked her own apprehension behind a facade of unwavering strength, a bulwark of support for her friend in need. As Emma grappled with the enormity of her circumstance, her mind strayed to a beacon of hope, a figure whose presence had once defined her world. I need to tell Chad about the baby. The declaration was equal parts assertion and yearning. A flicker of anticipation danced in her eyes, painting a portrait of a future she longed to reclaim. Julia's voice, soft yet resolute, broke through the reverie. Why should you bear this burden alone? Her words were a lifeline, a reminder that fatherhood too bore responsibility. The child has a father, and he should also be involved in its life. The truth reverberated, a reminder that destiny was a tapestry woven by more than one pair of hands. Emma's agreement was steadfast, her conviction unwavering. I agree, Julia. I just need to see Chad. Her heart clung to the belief that their love, once a beacon in the dark, could guide them through this tumultuous sea. However, a harsh reality awaited her. Chad's mobile phone, once a conduit of connection, now remained silent and unresponsive. The echoes of their past love seemed to fade into the distance, replaced by an eerie silence that mirrored the chasm between them. Summoning a reservoir of courage, Emma embarked on a journey, a pilgrimage to the doorstep of the past. Chad's parents' house loomed before her, a threshold to memories both bitter and sweet. The door swung open, revealing a woman whose gaze was a tempest, a storm of emotions that raged unchecked. Accusations tumbled from her lips, a torrent of indignation that threatened to engulf Emma. How dare you come here, you ungrateful girl? The accusations were a torrent, a symphony of anger that reverberated in the air. You deceived my son. What more do you want? The words were a dagger to Emma's heart, each syllable a reminder of the fractures that had torn their world asunder. But amidst the fury, Emma summoned her strength, her voice a counterpoint to the storm. I need to talk to Chad. Her declaration was a lifeline, a plea to bridge the divide. He will be a father, and you will be a grandmother. The revelation hung in the air, a precipice between past and future. Chad's mother recoiled, her face a canvas of disbelief. The hue of her complexion shifted, painting her rage in shades of purple. Her voice trembled with a mixture of fury and shock, the culmination of emotions too potent to be contained. The tapestry of their encounter bore witness to a confrontation that mirrored the complexities of human connection. In this crucible of emotions, two souls stood divided, each bearing the weight of their own narrative. The uncertainty of what lay ahead seemed daunting, but within the heart of this storm, the seeds of transformation were sown, ready to bloom into a future unknown. The gravity of the moment hung heavy, a decision that would shape the course of her future. Tell your lover you have the child, then deal with him yourself. The words were a command, a gauntlet thrown down amidst the tumult of emotions. Nora's eyes welled with tears, their brimming intensity a reflection of the storm within her. The dam of restraint strained against its confines, each tear an unspoken testament to the struggle within. Her resolve wavered, and yet, she fought to hold back the tide of her emotions. Her voice trembled as she sought solace in silence, the echoes of unspoken words resounding like a distant lament. The weight of her unched tears was a burden she bore alone, a secret she clung to like a fragile treasure. Chad's mother, a figure both imposing and enigmatic, reached out, bridging the chasm with a few sheets of fine paper. An air of confusion hung like a mist, thick and palpable. What's this? Nora's voice was laced with uncertainty, 
the words and inquiry into a world suddenly turned askew. Divorce papers, the words landed with a weight that matched the gravity of the situation. The woman's indifference painted a stark contrast to the tempest that raged within Nera. The revelations continued to unfold, each sentence like a thread unraveling the fabric of her life. You won't have to go to court. The proclamation was a cold comfort, an expedited path to dissolution. Also, Chad will soon marry a girl who is truly worthy of him. The words dripped with disdain, a final decree that severed the last lingering threads. Nera's world spun, reality itself a blur, as she stumbled into the refuge of Julia's home. The passage of time seemed a mere illusion, the days melting into each other as she grappled with the enormity of her circumstances. The weight of her decisions bore down upon her, casting a shadow over the possibilities she had once held dear. Ridiculous existence, the words slipped from her lips, a whisper that carried the weight of despair. Julia's gentle encouragement was a lifeline, a reminder that even in the darkest moments, light could be found. What are you talking about, Emma? Julia's voice held a tenor of hope, a steadfast refusal to succumb to the abyss. What ridiculous existence? The question was a challenge, an invitation to confront the demons that plagued her thoughts. The specter of uncertainty loomed large, a future fraught with challenges yet to be navigated. But money, what will we live on? Nora's voice trembled, the worries of a single mother echoing through her words. The state will pay you, and I'll work. Julia's conviction was a balm for Nora's anxieties. Maybe I'll take on two jobs. We'll live, we'll raise the baby, no worse than others. The words were a symphony of determination, a chorus of resilience sung by two friends bound by a shared commitment. Emma's journey continued, her footsteps marked by perseverance as she clung to her role as a janitor, a testament to her unwavering spirit. Even as her body bore the weight of impending motherhood, she pressed on, each day a testament to her endurance. The specter of uncertainty did not deter her, and on a night of celebration and renewal, she brought forth life itself. New Year's Eve painted the canvas of time with hues of hope, as Emma welcomed her daughter, a tiny beacon of promise. Sarah, a name chosen with love and deliberation, became the focal point of their universe. Amidst the backdrop of challenges, Julia and Emma found solace in their shared responsibility. Yet, the road they traversed was not without its trials, for the weight of providing for mother and child was a mantle they bore with unwavering determination. A knock echoed through the corridors of time, a herald of change and renewal. Scott stood at the threshold, an embodiment of transformation. Hi, forgive me, his words carried the resonance of redemption, a melody of change sung by a once discordant soul. I know you think I'm a monster because of me you lost your husband, but people change and I've changed for the better. The echoes of his confession painted the air with possibilities. Nara's heart wavered, the intricacies of forgiveness, a labyrinth, she navigated with trepidation. You know I'm not rich at all. His words were a balm to her wounded heart. But I'll help as much as I can. The declaration was an olive branch extended, a gesture of restitution she couldn't easily dismiss. In the tapestry of time, three years unfurled, a canvas painted with hues of challenge and joy. Together, Julia Nara and Scott raised Sarah, each day a testament to their shared commitment. The once fragmented trio found unity in adversity, a bond forged through the fires of life's trials. Scott's presence became a constant in their lives, a reminder that redemption was a journey not taken alone. His actions spoke of his transformation, his commitment to mending the fractures of the past. Nara's heart, once marred by bitterness, found the capacity to forgive, her wounds healing under the embrace of time and change. And then, a knock, a harbinger of destiny's capricious twists. Scott stood at the threshold, a harbinger of change, his presence a harbinger of a new chapter yet to be written. 
A mere few centimeters separated them, an infinitesimal distance that held within it the weight of fate's intricacies. Excuse me, are you all right? The voice, a lifeline in the aftermath of chaos, cut through the air like a beacon of concern. The words, a symphony of empathy, were offered by a pedestrian who had narrowly escaped the clutches of catastrophe. Thank God, the stranger's voice quivered, a tremor born of disbelief. For the first time in my life, I did not notice, his voice trailed off, the realization hanging heavy. Fear etched lines upon his face as he approached Scott, the man whose near miss had spared him from peril. Didn't you see me? Did you forget your eyes at home? Scott's grumbling, dissatisfied tones painted a portrait of annoyance. The face before him sparked a flicker of familiarity, a sense of having encountered this man before. Yet the memory remained elusive, a puzzle piece waiting to be placed. Consider it, the stranger implored, his gaze unwavering as he fixed it upon Scott. So I can compensate you for moral damage. The words held an air of formality, an attempt to quell the disarray that had erupted in the aftermath. Suddenly, a spark of recognition ignited within Scott's mind, a memory brought forth from the recesses of time. It was the same man he had glimpsed at the apartment with Emma, a figure tethered to the web of his past. Do you know Emma? The question, spoken with a mix of urgency and accusation, hung in the air like a lingering echo. Of course I do. The stranger's response was swift, his tone carrying a note of certainty. I'm her brother. The admission hung heavy, a link connecting the past to the present, unraveling the narrative that had once been veiled in uncertainty. A whirlwind of emotions swirled within Scott as the weight of his actions came crashing down upon him. You shouldn't have left Emma. The words, sharp and laden with reproach, tore through the air. You ruined her life for no reason. The truth, raw and unfiltered, painted a stark portrait of regret. Ruined her life? The words were a reflection of Scott's internal turmoil, the consequences of his actions laid bare before him. Yes, that's right, I did. The admission was a somber acknowledgement of the past's indelible scars, and not just for her, but for myself as well. Memory surged forth like a torrential flood, each recollection a fragment of a story he had tried to bury. Chad's heart bore the weight of his love for Emma, a love that had once ignited against the backdrop of his parents' disapproval. Their love had been a forbidden flame, kindled in secret, and extinguished by the cold winds of misunderstanding. The threads of their love story continued to unravel, a tapestry painted with hues of regret and longing. His marriage to Melina, a chapter meant to begin anew, had been marred by discontent. The embers of their relationship had smoldered, lacking the heat of passion, and after a mere six months, their union had crumbled, leaving behind a trail of broken dreams. Chad's introspection was an unflinching examination of his own culpability. Milano, a siren of recklessness, had beckoned him towards a life of extravagance and indulgence. His marriage had been devoid of the affection that had once burned bright in his heart, and he found himself adrift in a sea of regret. Unspoken admissions hung heavy, the truths he had hidden from himself now laid bare. The pangs of guilt gnawed at his conscience, a relentless reminder of the choices he had made. He had turned a blind eye to Emma's pleas, neglected to afford her the chance to explain, and abandoned her without a second thought. The weight of his guilt was a burden he had carried in silence, the specter of his choices haunting his every waking moment. The residue of his love for Emma had never faded, a constant presence amidst the ebb and flow of his life. Late remorse, a tempest of emotions, churned within him. The possibility of rekindling what had been lost beckoned like a distant light, a chance to mend the fractures he had wrought. Tell me, where does Emma live, please? The words were a desperate plea, an earnest cry for redemption. Where have you been? Scott's voice was a crescendo of frustration, a storm of accusations unleashed. 
Before, when Emma and Julia were freezing and hungry in a cold apartment, when Emma, pregnant, spent her days toiling, her body aching from the strain of her efforts, the words were a symphony of anger, the indignation palpable. Yeah, you were enjoying life with your millions. The accusation was a barb, each syllable a testament to the wounds left untreated. Chad, taken aback by the onslaught, offered a faltering response. I didn't know anything. His voice was tinged with a mixture of defense and remorse. Scott's anger remained unyielding, his emotions a turbulent sea. You didn't know anything? Oh yeah, that's indeed a good excuse. His sarcasm was biting, his frustration spilling forth unfiltered. But maybe you didn't want to know. The accusation was a pointed arrow, a challenge that pierced through the layers of complacency. Chad's heart, laid bare before the storm of Scott's anger, was a canvas upon which the shades of regret were painted. The truth he had long avoided confronted him, an undeniable reckoning with the choices he had made. The specter of his past loomed large, and amidst the turmoil, the ember of hope flickered, a beacon of opportunity he dared not ignore. Chad's emotions surged within him, a tumultuous tide that threatened to drown out the world around him. In the midst of his internal tempest, Scott's taunts fell upon deaf ears, the barbs of insult dissipating like smoke in the wind. As his racing heart found a moment of respite, Scott's demeanor shifted, his anger giving way to a more composed disposition. A measure of calm settled over Scott, his hand moving with purpose as he transcribed the elusive address onto a piece of paper. Take it, he offered, his voice carrying a trace of empathy. Perhaps not everything is lost for you yet. The words were a glimmer of hope, a fragile thread of possibility in a world that had seemed unremittingly bleak. Chad's footsteps echoed with purpose as he ascended the stairs to Julia's apartment, the anticipation like a drumbeat in his chest. He stood before the threshold, his heart poised on the precipice of a pivotal moment. Julia, the steadfast guardian of Emma's heart, met Chad's impassioned words with a measured response. Her words held a wisdom forged through shared experiences, an unspoken understanding of the scars that had marked Emma's soul. Don't break the drama into two acts in front of me, she cautioned, her voice a reflection of the empathy she felt. You hurt Emma, hurt her badly. So it's up to her to decide whether you should be in her life or not. A sobering truth hung between them, a reminder that the road to redemption was not one that could be traversed without Emma's consent. Julia's words were punctuated by the opening of the door, a pivotal moment in the unfolding narrative. Emma, her presence a fragile testament to the trials she had endured, entered the apartment. Her form was emaciated, yet her spirit remained resolute, a phoenix rising from the ashes of her past. Chad's gaze locked onto Emma, his heart a symphony of conflicting emotions. The depths of her eyes, bottomless and infinitely familiar, held within them a story of pain and resilience. Her shoulders, once burdened by the weight of her trials, now stood as pillars of strength. Tender hands, capable of both mending and nurturing, were a testament to the depths of her character. In that moment, he realized the profound significance of her presence in his life. Prepared speeches dissolved like mist in the face of a rising sun. Chad's voice, once a torrent of eloquence, now quivered with vulnerability. Forgive me, he whispered, the words of fragile plea that carried the weight of his remorse. His gaze never wavered from hers, the connection between them a bridge to the unspoken understanding that had eluded them for far too long. As their eyes locked in a silent exchange, Chad's heart stirred with a newfound realization. This was not the end. It was a prelude to a new chapter, a chance for redemption and renewal. In the depths of Emma's gaze, he saw the promise of a future marked by growth and transformation. The past, with all its mistakes and regrets, was but a prologue to the unwritten story that lay ahead, a story of healing, forgiveness, and the profound power of love to bridge the chasm of pain.